And as we look at the ruminations of Francois Bayrou looking for some sort of combination with uh, Mr Macron, a cautionary tale, Michael, looking back at Napoleon III. Uh, it's worthy looking back at our French history, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. I, I did mention Napoleon III in my, my last... You did, and I liked it, I liked, which is why uh, I brought it up. Tell uh, us why we should care. Exactly. I think, I think what, I, what I'm cautioning against is maybe people being a little bit over-ambitious or, 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 I think, politics and markets. You get the same tendencies. People get overconfident, you get to highs, uh, and then reality strikes, and when it does strike, it, it strikes hard. Um, interesting move from uh, François Bayrou today. Um, I think he figures out that, like uh, Mélenchon and uh, uh, Hamon, he doesn't really have a chance. Uh, he's more interesting because he is uh, the centrist candidate and, and Macron is kind of stealing his ground. I suspect that what, what he and other people are beginning to look, look at is that Macron has a, in the polls at least, if he makes the second round, he's got a decent chance of beating Le Pen. He will then need to form a government. Uh, and it will, I think, be a centrist government, a kind of a government of potentially national unity, it could be pitched like that, of people from the centre-left and centre-right. Um, and Bayrou would be a key player uh, in that, in, in some uh, senior role. So there's lots of uh, pragmatism, um, I think, at play here. Uh, and then in the latest polls, of course, Fillon has begun to edge back, uh, and then there's the, the arrest of... Are investors pricing in political risk adequately? You've got your barometer, you've got three scenarios, Ode oh, oh to Joy, Riddle of the Sands, infer Inferno, from low risk to high risk. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what, 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 how are we pricing risk right so, now, so we, given we, what you just exactly. said? Exactly. We, we've looked at, at a range of uh, European assets, from, from bank stress rates to, to credit, bo uh, government bonds, etc. Uh, we don't think that, apart from the, the, the currency, we don't think that en masse uh, investors are actually pricing the emergence or the re-emergence of political risk in Europe. Today is interesting because you're just beginning to see that come out. I mean, the, the, the buying pressure on the German uh, two-year, I think, is very interesting because it's one of the very, very few safe haven assets uh, in Europe. Uh, and I think it plays uh, an interesting role in that it's the other side of so many different trades. So if you want to go short the periphery, you're long uh, the German. If you, if you fear the Fed will raise rates quicker than people expect, uh, you're probably going to be long the, um, the, the German two-year as well. Uh, so there's all this buying pressure being loaded into the German bond market. Mm. The Just German economy is, is, is recovering quite quickly. Uh, so, so that tells me the bond is actually a safe haven asset, not a, uh, a, a sort of a, a cynical asset. Mm.